Hey guys, if you're a fan of genre, then this guy is probably working on a book uh, with your genre in mind. Mr. Brian Wood, thanks for talking to right, us here. Thanks, thank you. Uh, so you're doing a ton of stuff sort of all over the map. Uh, you want to start with some licensed stuff? Sure. Uh, Star uh, Wars. Star, Star Wars, sure. So this is um, this is the uh, original trilo trilogy, Star Wars, with the original characters, Luke and Leia, Han, every, everybody. Um, which is great. I mean, it kind of the the book takes place right after the first film, which the what what I call the first first film. Right. Yeah. We're all on board with that. Yeah. We can hang okay. with that. Um, and it just kind of tells some like original stories in that gap in between that and, and Empire. Uh, do you still have to play with sort of the Luke Leia romance a little bit? Is that a hard? That's a really that's a, a very fine line I have to I have to walk because um, I basically tr because they don't know they're they're related yet. Yeah. Everybody else does. Everybody reading reading the book does. So I sort of have to. I mean, I can't not. I, I can't ig ignore it. But obviously, it's like a very fine line. I have to. I have to walk. Well, in general, all the all of the story points from Empire and Return of the Jedi. Like, do you have to? Are you writing away from those toward them, or sort of? I guess you have to sort of balance both. Well, I basically have to pre pretend they they haven't happened yet in the in the lives of the characters. Right. Um, I think the kind of interesting twist, which I really enjoy. Is sort of if I can find ways to to for, foreshadow them, it's yeah. good for the readers because if we all we, we all know what the ending is, you know. Yeah, I'm sure that's so like fans get excited about that. Yeah. But yeah. it's always just pushing it further off, basically uh, down the, down the line. Yeah, but it's it is a lot a lot a lot of fun to sort of like you know massage some of the story story points with knowing knowing what's going to happen eventually. If, of course, you're setting up the uh, upcoming sequels as well, sort of in the in the long term. The upcoming uh, the upcoming Star Wars sequels. Oh yeah, am I? You're, you're, well, you <laughs> must be. You're you seven, eight, nine are right in your uh, yeah. in the in your future. Uh, let's talk uh, Conan. Okay. Uh, I feel like uh, I mean a lot of people. This character's been through so many iterations over the years. Uh, your series has a lot of a lot of emphasis on those romance. Uh, is that going to continue? And how is that different? How do you sort of gear toward that? Well. Um, if anybody who's read the original novels of the Queen of the Black Coast knows it's not going to con continue, right. that's that's not a spoiler, by the way. <laughs> it's pretty com common knowledge. Um, so this is sort of, I mean, this is the story of his like first real true, his first real real love, and it ends very very badly. So um, I think it's sort of, um, it's it's a it's a real it's not something that that defined Conan originally in all the original novels and everything. Um, my chance now is to sort of really um, show what the relationship was, like all these years they they spent having adventures, which the novels just like kind of kind of skip skipped over. So they skipped uh, over all the adventure, all the fun stuff. Basically, they sort of like the 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 original novel shows how they met, and then there's this point where they're like, and they spent several years pirate pir pirating up and down the coast. Wow. And then the ending happens, and so those several years are what this series is it's about. It's like a romantic comedy montage that you're Basically. now developing. Exactly, except it's like a 20-issue montage. Oh. So <laughs> awesome. Uh -huh. um, and so I feel like it just—I mean, feel like it sort of—it um, it adds a lot of depth and meaning to this relationship that that is very is very pivotal, but was never really explained in detail. Yeah, I love the way sort of the characters are soft with each other at different points or in different arcs, really. Like yeah. when she went back to his his home village and she was like very sort of cowed, yeah. and then he was with her and she was like, "I'm going to almost kill you here a number of times." <laughs> it's a very it's a very up and down down relationship. Just like visiting uh, your significant yeah, others. In last, sure, sure, yeah. <laughs> exactly, exactly like that. <laughs> Perfect uh, parallel. And uh, let's talk about uh, some creator-owned uh, Mara. Mara. Um, sort of a, I mean, if anybody's read my old series, um, Demo, mm -hmm. it's, it's a lot like that. It's a very sort of personal, ground level, real, realistic take on someone that has uh, emerging superpowers. Um, Mara, in this case, is sort of like a, sort of an uber professional athlete from the future. Why uh, volleyball? Are you a huge volleyball fan? Well, I wanted something that wasn't very common, like not like a major sports like baseball or something like that i actually gave uh, the the artist ming, ming doyle a choice between sort of like this like crazy amped up arena soccer uh, floor, floor hockey 
I don't know if you ever played that in gym, yeah, in gym, gym class. In, the, in elementary school. I thought that'd be awesome <laughs> to bring floor hockey back <laughs> and, and vol- volleyball, and, and I, I let Ming uh, pick it. So. It is, uh, it's so striking just seeing the volleyball in the logo. Yeah. Uh, that it's like, oh, it, it, and for, I don't know why, it really hit, strikes a chord, and I don't know, is that something other people have said? Um, Maybe it's just me, <laughs> my well, gym I think, class. I think everybody sort of thought this was going to be like a pure sport, sports com- comic, and maybe I should do like a pure sports sports comic at some point. <laughs> I don't know. There's something. It is something very, very iconic about that yeah. that little. Right, little super little. Pro from Marvel, I'm sure, is something you talk about a lot. Uh, NFL Super Pro, the uh, old uh, NFL superhero, I guess, from like I guess maybe late '80s. Someone will correct me on that, I'm sure. Someone should should bring it bring it back. I'm surprised like um, Jason Aaron hasn't or something. A dark sort of <laughs> twisted. Uh, and what's coming up down the line? Um, X Men number one. That's about a month out. Um, it's a, re- a relaunch of the book with uh, Olivier Coipel, who I've just met for the first time here. Uh, yeah, he's here. He's a very handsome man. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it helps. So, yeah, that's going to be... I'm kind of in, de- in denial about that, a little bit like how I was in de- denial about launching Star Wars. Um, I get in such a tunnel when I'm working on these scripts because I'm just writing them for the, for the editor's sake. Yeah. I'm not really thinking about the uh, fact that it's actually going gonna, to be, be in stores at some point. Um, so I think that's going to be like a real major launch for them and a little yeah, yeah. a lot of pressure that's exciting and uh, the team is uh, all ladies yes uh, yes is that, why that choice is that your choice um, I think it was Marvel's choice originally I mean it's sort of um, I mean when, when I was writing X-Men last year I had a cast that was all female except for one mm-hmm. so I think um I think that sort of helped Marvel decide to just take that extra tiny step right. and do something different. And I was, of course, right in, right in line to be the writer for it, which is awesome. Uh, it's I, th- I think a lot of people think it's like it's like a gimmick or something, or it's like an, just an attention grabbing thing, and it definitely does does that. Yeah. Um, but I feel like once the book comes out, it's, I think everybody's gonna get be be surprised how we sort of handle it. Yeah, to the uh, credit, it doesn't say like these ladies are gonna kick some ass or anything. Yeah, in the, the and they, they don't go go shopping. Yeah, right, point, exactly. Anything like that. It really is like a straightforward, full on, almost like a classic X Men action adventure comic. It's very, very heavy. It's like a brawler book. Oh, good. All ladies, rock and roll, wrestling women versus the Aztec mummy. Uh, essentially. Awesome. Well, thanks for talking to us. Uh, Good luck with everything else. You guys stay tuned for plenty more from C2E2.